Well, it's about time for a follow-up video, isn't it? Let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to do a follow-up on the last video on the Voodoo 2 reverse sleeper system. We are looking at it right now, well at least it's video output. And uh, yeah, I got some news. First of all, I want to thank everyone that uh, put some suggestions in the comments on uh, what they thought was uh, a possible issue. Um, most of you suggested that it could be a temperature related problem. I've tested it with a fan directed at the uh, Voodoo cards themselves. I'm just letting that run for a while. It didn't seem to make much of a difference. So I don't think it's that. I even swapped the cards around to, to get the card that needs the most airflow on top so it gets the most airflow. Makes sense. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's the temperature problem. And uh, I just started to, uh, you know, disregard that fact and did something very simple. I took out the uh, video card that I had in there. In fact, let me get it up here. The video card that was in here before that was uh, passing through for the Voodoos was this card here. This is an HIS Excalibur Radeon 9000 Pro with 128 megabytes of uh, DDR memory. It's a very nice card, black PCB and blue heatsink. This card works very well. Well, it works very well on its own, but the ATI drivers, they do not want to work with Glide drivers, so, or 3DFX cards. That's what I discovered. I took this card out, I connected the Voodoo cards to the onboard video that this motherboard has. It's a Via S3 Unichrome 2 solution. Uh, it does in fact support 3D, but uh, yeah. Once I played a glide game or demo, in fact, we could possibly just start a demo real quick. Uh, tools, demos. The donut one will cause the system hang, so that's probably not supported. There we go, 3DFX. And here we have it bouncing. So I'm gonna stop the spinning because that's just giving everyone a headache, I'm sure. And here we can see Demo running at 181.82 FPS. And once you go back to Windows, as you might notice, there are no uh, glitches. Not when I right click or when I try to search in the start menu. So this is the same scenario that happened when I ran it on uh, an onboard video. At the moment, I'm not running onboard video. In fact, uh, someone might have noticed that there's an NVIDIA tray icon here. We're now running on an NVIDIA graphics card. It is an FX 5200. It's a card by Gainward that I had laying around. It's a 128 megabyte card again with 128 uh, bit uh, bus. And uh, yeah, it appears to run just fine. Running a 75 Hertz on this particular monitor and it's doing just fine. DirectX 8.1 is installed. This is a DirectX 9 capable card, but I I rarely ever bother to install the DirectX 9 features on Windows 98. I'm also downgraded to Windows 98, by the way. And yeah. By the way, the software was not a component in this. I tested this under Windows Millennium and uh, that didn't make a difference at all. I just decided that Windows 98 is uh, probably the safest bet. I had the best initial results with this Voodoo 2 SLI setup under 98 SC, so I figured why not go back, and I did. So here we have Quake 3 Arena. This uh, this game wouldn't start, if you remember from last time, that's, that's actually where we ended the video. Um, right. Oh, that's interesting. You see the text there, it says, hack approximating cinematic for Rage Pro or Voodoo. Huh. I also noticed this isn't actually the latest version of Quick 3 Arena. This is 1.3. I think the latest version 1.32. Not much of a difference there, but you know. So let's enable time demo and run the demo called 4. 
turn the volume down a little bit because this is a pretty loud one in time demo mode. And here we can see the performance of Voodoo 2 SLI on the Quick 3 Arena at 800 by 600 normal settings. Or medium. There we go. And the results are probably V-Synced. No, actually not for once. Or, well, yeah, actually they are. <laughs> 74.9 FPS, so we're running up against the VSync limit. Should probably see if I can disable VSync somehow, but uh, I'm not terribly fast to be honest. In fact, if it can run faster, and that's great, but I don't really need that, and the cards will just get warmer. 75 FPS is honestly fine. Let's also go to the next light game that we showed last time, which is Unreal Tournament, Game of the Year Edition version 436. There are newer versions uh, through old Unreal with uh, newer patches, but they're mostly for modern systems to make the game run properly. There's even an, uh, uh, a port for the unri original Unreal Tournament for uh, the M1 architecture for Mac, which is pretty nice and actually works very well. I've tried running that on my M2 Pro Mac Mini on macOS uh, Ventura and it worked great, so that's nice. Right, so let's use a different map this time. We always use Facing Worlds. Uh, we can actually just use a... Uh, well, let's go deck 16. That's a nice map always. We'll just go for 10 kills, make this short. We can also enable time demo mode in Unreal Tournament. It has two ways to show FPS. You can do stat FPS or time demo one. Time demo one will show you actual frames per second. Stat FPS will basically show you the frame times. There we go. By the way, I have the Chaos UT Mutator active, so we'll see some different behavior from the stock game. I like the pulse gun, it's so bad. All right, proxy mines. Let's have some fun with these bad boys. And as you can see, we're running 100 plus FPS on this map. 800 by 600, high settings, 16-bit color. There we go. Let's, let's see if they can cause some mayhem. Yep, and they killed someone. Great. Don't even need to do anything. Nope, they still have spawn protection on. Boom. I don't have an impact hammer. Yikes. Oh, that hurt. I think he had an explosive crossbow. Yep, he did. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Almost 100 FPS. 800 by 600 high settings. In our tournament with Voodoo 2 SLI. That's a great experience. Really plays it very well. There's one game that I have noticed some glitching on. I'll just open this game quickly. This is GL Quake. I don't know if this is because I ran the uh, patcher for the game. When you install GL Quake, it will actually ask you if you have a Voodoo card. I just opted to say yes, and then I still ran the mini GL driver. Regardless, which I shouldn't have done, honestly. Let's go with easy. Alright, let's go in world one. There we are. Jump up here. Yeah, you can see the down there where it glitches where it doesn't actually want to refresh. Seems to be a refreshing bug because if you just go like larger or smaller on the UI, it generally works fine until something changes there. Not quite sure what that is. I think it's a very minor thing, but there's something I noticed. It's probably not there when we run the DOS version of Quake, which we can open here. I've installed the DOS drivers for the Audigy card, so we can also play DOS games. There we are. Oh, it works fine in the DOS version, so it's something regarding uh, GL Quake there. At least now we know. 
just like we got a hard system crash returning from quick that's just a thing right but other than that at least graphically the system is now stable so yeah I'm very happy that I can at least now play 3D effects games just fine. Also happy that I found out how to make the Oddity work for DOS. And uh, that means I can also use this system to run uh, DOS games in the full Visa resolutions up to 640, 480, 800 by 600. And they run very well because we have a very powerful Athlon 64 CPU. So all in all, I'm very happy with the system right now. As you can see, judging by this here, uh, we still have a few kinks to iron out. But those are minor, those are things that I can figure out myself. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.